Hello there, one and all, and welcome to episode 336 of Love at First Sense with me, Salais, as always, live on YouTube. Thank you very much for tuning in, whether you are watching live or you are watching the recording. Um, the, for the benefit of those of you watching live, the, the the sort of rough plan, there is always a rough plan, as you know, for today, is that we are going to be talking about this brand. And I've just seen that two of the samples have fallen over. This is, this is a brand that is... Um, genuinely, literally new to me. I haven't smelt a single one of their works and we have their entire output here. So we're going to be discovering them together um, at the same time, as it were. And then we will take a brief break and I will come back with uh, a brief video on a, a truly, truly beautiful vintage uh, bottle of an old scent that all of you know and many of you love, I'm sure. First comment for today goes to Rachel, who says hello. Rich Mitch is here as well with a very, very appropriate emoji. Tina says, a great shirt. Thank you very much for tuning in. I should also say, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please please do consider doing so. And you can also find out how you can support my work by clicking on the link to my coffee page in the video description below. Um, if you do subscribe, please do click on the little bell, the notifications bell. So many of you write to me to say, and what's the best way of finding out um, when I'm going to go live? Um, I think the YouTube way is meant to be that you click on the little notifications bell to receive notifications of new uh, new videos. Otherwise, uh, check out uh, social media channels, mo mostly Instagram. I try to give as much notice as possible of the videos, but um, unfortunately, I can never give as much notice as I'd like to. I usually manage to give about 24 hours, sometimes a little bit longer. More comments coming in. Dustin is saying greetings from Texas. Uh, Eric is saying hello from humid, warm Texas. And M. Snoch, is that right? Says hello from Katowice. Well, you've come from a, a country that is going to be very, very relevant to today's video. As I say, a brand new, um, the, the brand is called Wolf Brothers, and it is a Polish brand. I have no idea if any of you out there have smelt any of their wares. If you have, please do let me know. Um, I became aware of them just as I happened to be doing a little bit of sort of internet-based perfume window shopping, the kind of thing that all of us probably do from time to time. And yeah, well, being half Polish myself, I was intrigued by the fact that there was a, um, a, a newish brand from Poland. There are not many all Polish perfume brands out there. And because they've only got six perfumes so far, I thought, well, I could get all six samples. So I obtained these myself. They are from their um, UK retailer. They do have a UK retailer. So the, the, I don't know the brand. The brand, as far as I'm aware, don't know me. They don't know that I've got these samples. They don't know that we're going to be doing this video. For all I know, it could turn out to be a complete disaster, which is probably, hopefully won't be. You know, keep an open mind, stay optimistic. But that's also partly why I'm doing the beautiful vintage scent video after this one because if this does turn out to be a complete disaster at least we know we have got something truly truly spectacular around the corner um so wolf brothers i did what anybody else would do in this day and age to find out a little bit more about the brand and there there is a uh website which is kind of intriguingly it's it's its web address is wolfbrothers.men I didn't even know that you could have dot men websites, which kind of made me think, okay, well, what's that supposed to be all about? Um, and you, the, the the website is 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 sort of you know suitably dark and mysterious looking for a brand called Wolf Brothers. And in the get to know a little bit more about us section, you've got this paragraph, um, which ends in. A slightly dubious fashion, you know, a fashion that made me think, oh gosh, do I, you know, do I sort of want to plunge straight into a showcase of this brand without smelling anything from them at all? Anyway, this is, this. maybe, maybe you'll feel different. So it says, it all started a few years ago on a cold winter evening on one of the Bieszczady forest trails. Two wolves bound by bonds of blood made a, made a notable pact in the midst of a blizzard. They knew from experience that to prosper in this wild world, they must act as a pack. So I'm guessing this is a reference to the fact that maybe there are the genuinely two brothers who started this brand, and I think their surname must be Wilk, which is the Polish word for wolf, okay? Soon Piotr and Łukasz, two hikers eager to succeed, 
joined, this is how Wolf Brothers was established, an exclusive fragrance brand for genuine men. That's the bit you can imagine that set a few alarm bells ringing in my head because I thought, oh, what on earth does that mean? And is that is that trying to be ironic? Is it exclusive? Is it just meant to be generally a comment about masculinity, which is, of course, an area that is that is open to everybody, right? Anybody can can try to tap into or express a masculine side and vice versa. But I'd, oh, Katerina says, oh, God, yeah. Um, toxic masculinity, says Rachel. Well, I hope not, right? I hope not. But I did, I, I did think, how should I be taking this? Then there's a description of the actual guys. So there is a Victor Wilk. There is also a Shimon Wilk, and then the guys who joined them are Piotr Romański and Łukasz Markiewicz. Um, and, and we're told that Wiktor Wilk is a true alpha male and born herd leader. Um, he is responsible for creating the fragrance compositions and working with partners from France. His extremely well-developed sense of smell allows him to link fragrances perfectly with emotions and genuine primal instincts. And if that results in really excellent perfumes, okay, fine. Um, Davlone says, I lost my certificate of authenticity and so have lost my genuine status. <laughs> yeah, I've probably lost my genuine status a little bit or quite some time ago as well. Um, oh my God, these fragrances are so not for you, says Gavin. Really? Re why? Are you saying that just because you've read the description or because you know? I'm still intrigued, okay, because each one is named after a different animal. Let let's carry on. Let's read... Um, Let's read the other brother's profile. So Shimon Wilk is the second of the Wilk brothers. He is the good spirit and keeper of positive energy in the pack. Okay, so we so, so we've got a yin and yang thing happening here. I'm glad I'm 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 already liking the sound of Shimon a lot more. A keen hiker, okay, I'm perhaps not so much into the hiking, who crosses unexplored mountain trails in search of true inspiration. So I'm I'm thinking maybe we've we'll got along more with what Shimon likes to do. Does not sound promising. Rachel says, hmm, like cigarette, vodka, and espresso for breakfast type of masculinity. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but you can see why I kind of thought, hmm, actually, I want to share this with you. Um, Gavin says, just the description and the Viking-y, slavic -y, masculine, axe-throwing, animal, scratchy aesthetics on the website is what... Yes, the aesthetic it doesn't especially appear to me, but, you know, it doesn't have to completely appeal to me, right? So each scent has been inspired by an animal that lives in Polish forests. Um which is fine as far as concepts go, but it did make me think as well, gosh, this whole thing of finding some kind of unusual, original, novel, stroke, wacky, quirky concept, how much further can this possibly be taken? And surely we must, must, must be on the, on the verge of, you know, coming to the point where a few brands actually will turn around and say, do you know what? We're just going to be a good perfume brand. I'm sure I said this on this channel a couple of years ago. You know, when Frederick Mal came along and basically said, we're going to make good perfumes. Um, Ville Germain came along a couple of years ago, you know, the one, um, uh, the brand found by Francisco Gratacos, where, you know, again, it, it's just about making good perfumes. They don't overall have to have a, a strange concept binding them together. Eric says, I think I'm done with animal branded lines. Yes, thank you for bringing that up. Of course, we have got Zoologist, which has done extremely well. I'm not being overly aware of uh, Zoologist's most recent output, but it's a brand that gets a lot of love and attention out there. So having having said that, you know, gone into this preamble, set the context, I think we should, we, we'll, we'll try to smell all of them. We'll see how we do time-wise. Um, there is a bear, a deer, a goat, a wolf, of course, a boar, and then also a wizent. I didn't even know what wizents are, but it is a it is a particular type of bison. Um, I may be wrong, but I think it's the bison that uh, I, I think I think it's the zubr, isn't it? That, that 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 from which we get the you know the name for the zubrufka vodka. Um, but I, but I could be wrong. Sharon says, between Zoologist and Penhaligon's portrait series, the animal character theme has been very popular and possibly played out. Um, 
Sardonic Sophisticate says, as per the description, each must be a genuine something dropper. Uh, Eric says, just a pet peeve, but those sample labels are too big. Yes, but they're nothing to do with the brand, okay? So they're just from the retailer. It's, uh, I, I don't mind telling you, uh, because I just got these myself, that I ordered these from Bloom, which is the shop in Covent Garden in London. And they make these large labels um, I think because they they just they, they put they put a QR code on them so that you can go and find out a little bit more about the scent and they put the notes on them and they label them. So, yeah, they're large labels, but actually they've they've got a bit of info on them. So I, 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 don't, I don't mind them really. They, they can be quite helpful. But yeah, storage wise, they can be a little bit um, a little bit of a pain. Katerina says if it's a, crit a critique on masculinity like Eggers movie Northman, which I wanted to see, that's still on the list. They could be interesting but I'm not optimistic. Okay, we just need to do this. I think we I, we should start with Wolf, right? Because if, if if it's Wolf Brothers, we should start with Wolf. Heaven only knows what we've got waiting for us here. <laughs> but yeah, just go for it. I think stop, stop trying to... Okay, so Wolf from Wolf Brothers. And I will also read the blurbs that go with them because I have no idea what the blurbs are. That's good, isn't it? Oh, well. <laughs> Gavin says, I feel these are what the man who stormed the Capitol with a horned helmet would wear. But I, if that's the vibe they're going for, that's so not me. But, but oh, let's smell. So this is Wolf. Well, he's sort of quite a pleasant, cuddly wolf to start with. <laughs> Don't mind him so much at all. Um... So, okay, it starts off. It starts off so much quieter than I thought it would. Who is the perfumer, says Rachel. They have not revealed the perfumer or perfumers as far as I'm aware, which is also a little bit of a black mark in my book. I really, really, really don't think there can be any excuse nowadays to have the whole anonymous perfumer thing. Uh, I don't know. Um, it's spicy. It's It's sort of cardamomy, nutmeggy, shades of um shades of Olivia Jacobetti's Idol for Lubin, which is the still sort of kind of the, the, the sort of high watermark of that kind of slightly boozy, woody, spicy scent. More like Wolf of Wall Street, says Tina. Yes, you're not wrong there. While that let me let me label the blotter, because um, you know, with six animals. If by the way, I do start um <laughs> Producing Teen Wolf type. I mean, I'm, I've, I already have no shortage of hair on my arms, so you know, maybe Wolf was the one made for me. But um, do call for help if I suddenly start developing fangs and things. Right, Wolf. What have we got to? What have they got to say about Wolf? Uh, wolf. The fragrance of the night, fear and wilderness. Okay. A quote from The Perfumer, the anonymous perfumer. I imagined the full moon on a cold night in the forest, a perfume that through spicy and woody notes of vetiver and pepper dressed in leather evokes the dark side of the wolf wandering through the wilderness after dark. OK, so I suppose what's interesting here is that it's quite silent. So maybe... Maybe it's meant to be the secretive wolf you know, wolf as ninja warrior, if I can bring in a completely different analogy. Herb says, um, all mammals, interestingly. Yes, that is interesting. Rachel says, what can you tell us about Polish scent culture? Is it more like clean Scandinavian preferences or closer to Russian or French style? Rachel, you know, even though I'm half Polish, I don't feel I know enough. I mean, I haven't lived in Poland since forever. Um, and... Yeah, somebody else watching. I mean, we've got somebody watching from Katowice, and I know that uh, we have a few other Poland-based viewers who pop in now and then. My my gut feeling is that the overall preference is not for the sort of Scandinavian style and maybe heading more towards things that are more Russian in tastes. But, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I am I'm would actually prefer to find out more from, from, from people who live there. Um, oh, Tomasz is here saying, hello, everybody. Right, Tomasz, you can answer our question, please. Um, in terms of the notes that they've listed here, yeah, they're saying spicy, fruity, red pepper, smoked plum, cardamom, davana, vetiver, myrrh, pine, frankincense, leather, oak moss, tonka bean. Um, 
and yes, all of this is in there. I'm also getting a little bit of a sort of hint of Amouage um, Boundless, which I'm a huge fan of, as you know. Um, just a very, very, very pleasant, woody, spicy scent. Not at all sort of off-putting in any way and, and doesn't make you think that, that it's cheap or crass in any way. Okay, so this this is fine. I'm leading up to goat, by the way, because I have a feeling that goat is going to be the really, really interesting, um, <laughs> potentially nasty one. So I've done wolf. Let's just sort of put aside the ones that I've done before I get completely confused. Let's try. Let's try deer. Um, uh, Mateusz says, Rachel, there's not a big perfume culture in Poland, at least for me personally. I prefer the French style. Yeah, it's an interesting point. I mean, perfumery, there are there are a few interesting, certainly in Warsaw. I don't have much of a knowledge of, of Poland outside of Warsaw, but there are some very, very decent perfumeries in Warsaw that stock um, a lot of the sort of niche brands, independent brands that you will be aware of, loads and loads of Sephoras. Um, anyway, this is the deer. <laughs> Oh, and that's curious. Huh, there's something very, very, very fascinatingly wintry about this. Um, and very, very soft and gentle and cedary. Oh, something animalic coming through as well. Oh, this is cute. This is curious. The deer is curious. Quite hard to place to start with. Did I label it? No, I haven't labeled it yet, have I? Um, is it manly, says Eric. Do you know, I actually don't care whether it's manly or not. I'm sort of moving aside from that. Is it timid like a deer, says Herb? Well, maybe it's, maybe it's hesitant. Hesitant and gentle and soft. And yet there is some kind of, there is that sort of almost equine animalic quality that I don't think I've smelt since Mathilde Laurent's Leur Fougueuse for uh, Cartier. Um, is it rutting season? Gavin, you need to stop now. <laughs> um, I'm curious to smell this in terms of what Polish creators are attracted to, says Rachel. No, good, good point. It would be interesting to get some kind of aesthetic context, right? Some kind of cultural marker context. Maybe we should see if the, the wolves fancy being interviewed. Um, Hard to place, hard to place, because there's almost like maybe the gentlest, gentlest sort of floral inflection, something slightly medicinal. C curious, and not not to be not to be dismissed straight away, right? Let's see what they say about deer. Probably completely different from what I've just told you. Now. I'm just looking up the information here. So deer, they have as the fragrance of the dry forest, majesty pride and glory. Okay. I mean, I suppose the silence could be read as either being majestic or timid, as somebody said, hesitant. Um, and what have we got? We've got a quote from the perfumer. Aromatic herbs, spices, and woody bark resonate in the mountain atmosphere and welcome the powerful galloped herds. Slightly dodgy translation there, probably. The sense of musk, leather, and hay blend with the animal power evoked by the sleek and fragrant fur of wild deer. There is something kind of furry to it. What's that Villaresi scent that's so, so, so popular in um, in Russia? Is it Tandanej that, that's got that kind of furry quality? And this is probably a little bit more simplistic than, than the wolf one. Uh, what's Tomasz telling us about our, our cultural attaché? As for fragrances made in Poland in the communist era, most of them were like classical eau de cologne, like Vars. Gosh, you can still find a few bottles of that somewhere. Smells like 4711, but is spicier, not worse at all. Um, uh, Kath, 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 great. So, oh, Catherine the Great, as it says, would like to try Exuma Parfum, the Polish brand. Herds, it's very good. Some inspired by well-known perfumes. Um... What have they got as their notes? Clary sage, mint. Yes, that's the coldness, isn't it? Pistachio. Okay, didn't think that, but green coffee. I wonder what I picked up as the coldness. It could have been the mint, the cedar wood. 
and the animalic quality coming through with the leather and the musk. Um, yes, we should we should do. It. I am intrigued by this. Okay, let's move on to let's do the the, the weasant or the you know the the bison. Let me label it first, actually. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Goat will be the last one. You know that goat's got to be the last one. So this is the now a bison. You'd expect something really, really kind of heavy and uncompromising and big and bold. I don't know. Um, this is geranium-y. I'm immediately taken back to the first time I tried Frederick Mal uh, geranium pour monsieur. Oh, but something weird there as well. They, they do have a little bit of a twist to them, all of these, don't they? Um, so it's like geranium and grass. Okay, so maybe it's because of the, the you know, the bison's feeding on the grass and hay-like. But it's almost not quite fecal funky. So it's the geranium pour monsieur guy who hasn't had a shower for a few days and is just on the verge of really needing one. Um, fascinating. Oh, I'm quite enjoying the, I mean, so far, these are ones where I'm thinking, hmm, I wonder how much they cost actually, because I didn't look up price at all. So bear, 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 go to the bear. So bear, they're calling the fragrance of savageness, bravery and respect. I mean, savageness. Everything seems to be like, they've got this aesthetic, which is all like, Argh! whereas in reality, they're kind of going, <laughs> if you see what I mean. Um, what are they saying about it? So the quote from our esteemed perfumer, the top notes are inspired by the forest with resinous notes of pine and fir. The dark bear's fur is represented by ambery notes of cistus and labdanum. The powerful notes of cinnamon and ginger make up a respect and fear animal of the forest. Okay, so get, get me to check your English prose, okay? While honey and vanilla notes add smoothness to the composition. It could be the honey that's making it slightly... Oh no, sorry, somebody's just... Uh, this Was this weasand or bear? No, you're right, you're right. This was weasand. Oh, wake up, wake up, Persilais. Sorry, All right, scrap the last two minutes of the interview. Okay, weasand. The fragrance of the meadow, power, self-confidence, pride, and self-control. Right, we got. We, we better do bear next. So the quote, thank you very much. Who was that? Was that Herb? Thank you very much for watching. Uh, the perfumer says, hay, black currant, and woody notes bring us to the vast space of the Carpathian Mountains, a place where weasand are living. I think they mean leathery notes, but they've put lathery notes, which is a different sort of sense entirely. Remind the strength of the weasand while animalic notes evoke its thick and warm fur. So they say in the top note, it's grapefruit, black currant leaf, blackberry leaf, no suggestion of geranium. Um, and woody notes in the middle of hay, bison grass and acorns. And then spicy notes of vanilla. I'm still, I mean, okay, black currant leaf, maybe not a million miles away from geranium, but I'm still getting a real freshness here. Uh, Rachel says, I'm curious about how the aesthetics and descriptions compared to the actual smells are perceived culturally by their buyers. Fascinating. No, you're absolutely right. You know, what some, you know what I just said about how to me these are actually nowhere near as loud and powerful as they seem to be making out. Maybe within a completely different cultural context, people would be going, oh my God, this is too much. You know, how could anybody possibly wear this? Um, Dev says, so far this brand seems like they're playing an unreliable narrator and all their scents are described ironically. Interesting if I'm not reading too much into it. Or maybe, as Rachel says, it, 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 it's to do with cultural variation and cultural differences. All right, so apologies for the mix-up a few minutes ago. Let us now do the bear before I make things really, really confusing. Um, get the pencil. Okay, so the bear... <clears throat> which will mean that we will have two to go after this one. But yes, I, I I thought this would these would turn out to be, I suppose, just a lot more stupid somehow, a lot more simplistic. I mean, I guess I should have known better because Bloom, the people who run Bloom, are very, very, very careful about who and what they stock. So I should have I should have trusted their um their tastes actually. Anyway, this is this is bear. Ooh, okay. 
I'm I'm not, you know, I don't dislike animals at all, but I'm not an animal person in the sense of having pets or anything like that. So I don't, you know, I've, I've the only bear I've ever seen, I think, has either been like at a zoo or maybe, you know, a circus when I was a kid. Um, so I don't know about the animal references, but suddenly, for whatever reason, I am now back in India. Um, and And those sort of wonderful wide-ranging contrasts that India presents to you with that kind of real carnal, fleshy funkiness somewhere and something woodier and and, and cleaner. <laughs> That's brilliant. Davlon says, Paddington Bear on a bender. This probably is Paddington Bear on a bender, but I don't know, on a bender. Um, Eric says, nothing like hiking across a bear. Oh my goodness, have you done that then? Luckily, they're usually as scared of humans as we are of them. You know, th th so far I have to say, the one that the strength of the four I've smelled, this is a very interesting way of presenting animals because at least to our, to my cultural reference points, it kind of has steered away from a lot of the cliches. You know, I would have thought that maybe, you know, the bear would be really, really funky. So I, I won't, I won't reread the bear description, except to say that it's meant to be, what was it, pine, fur, cistus, labdanum, honey, vanilla. Apparently it's got iris in the in, in its in its heart. It's there's some something cuddly about it as well, I suppose. Um oh, Paul Pofemo has checked out the price. 116 euros for 50 mils. Are they worth it? You know I don't like answering that are they worth it question because that's such a personal question. I mean, 116 euros for 50 mils is obviously pushing it towards the expensive end. Uh, bear sounds the most interesting, says Gavin. I think to me so far, ah, deer is going kind of odd. There will obviously be a blotter update on these because I think we need to get a, some sort of sense of how they develop. Let's do the boar next. Now, come on. A boar, you can't, you can't, you can't give us like a nice, sweet, cuddly boar, can you? Um... Katerina says, it's a shame because the scents so far seem to be at least quite decent, accompanied by rather unfortunate marketing. Maybe, maybe these guys, maybe there aren't even four men, you know, maybe, maybe the whole thing is a fiction. Maybe there's men and women behind this brand. I don't know. Um, okay. So this is, this is the boar as opposed to the bear. This is fascinating too. It's like I know that it's the other one that said honey, but it's in this one that I'm getting something really earthy, funky, but still contrasted with cleanliness and greenness. This is interesting and spicy as well. Oh, so far this is the one that I think. Uh, because it's kind of green, with a green that's kind of stripped back and made really, really sort of clean, planed wood. And yet somewhere, there's a, quite a sort of dangerous, dodgy, animalic thing. Uh, pig snuffling for truffles, says Gavin. Is it truffle? Well, I didn't think... No, I didn't think truffle, I mean, what is it? Is it like sort of 55% or 50% of the population can't smell truffles? I mean, I can certainly smell truffles, you know, when it's truffle oil or when there's a few shavings on, on food. So I think I'm amongst the, the people who can smell truffles. I didn't get that truffle feel. So maybe in the sense of, you know how it comes up as well is, is it in Une Rose, which is now called, what is it called? Rose Tonnerre from Frederick Mao. In that sense but it's odd it, it is odd in a good way in a good way so this is the boar let's see what they say about the boar the fragrance of the wet undergrowth madness and fury and there is something damp and earthy about it 
Um, in the Polish context, would this be niche, says Rachel? Um, I suppose in any context, it would be independent niche, wouldn't it? Because I think I think it is an independent brand. So what does the perfumer say? Here is a powerful beast. Hunger makes him aggressive and devious. He eats everything he finds, apples, leaves, and mushrooms. His fur is perfumed by the foliage green notes that he wallows in. This blend of leather, vetiver, and truffle notes is combined with the scent of tree moss, sweat, scratched bark. Interesting. He releases terror. It's a wild animal fighting for free living. Okay, I don't get the violence. And I, I, don't, I don't get any violence from any of these so far. But fascinating, fascinating nonetheless. And then the notes are pretty much what we've said. Apple, galbanum, okay, so there's the green, the truffle that they're insisting on, moss, conifer, dry woods, vetiver, fur, and leather. Um, the, and the green is quite marked. The green is really, really kind of pulling the base up and stopping it from from getting it from from becoming too too funky too animalic and now the goat i don't know why i th i thought maybe you know maybe the goat is going to be the most devilish the strangest the weirdest i don't know uh so let's label the blotter goat um oh and tomash is giving us uh lists of of other Polish brands um, for us to check out. And so we end with the goat. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is, a, this is a goat that has just like stepped out of the lift at the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. But this is this is this is really interesting. Gosh, this is quite weird. It's almost like an <laughs> a goat that's yeah, like gone on holiday to the Middle East and decided to pack some cheese in its suitcase before heading off to the souk and dousing itself in some kind of leathery oudi concoction thing. How bizarre, how bizarre, how utterly bizarre, but how really and truly fascinating. I'll let, I'll let this develop and then we will have a re-smell of all of them, I think, as well. So let's see what the goat is. Did I click on goat? Yes, I did. The fragrance of the pathless mountains, insanity and obsession. Interesting. Um, quote from the perfumer, I built this fragrance keeping in mind that it must be unusual and surprising. Okay, well done. Um, so I wanted to express the wild side of the animal. Goat's milk, cheesy. Mushrooms and truffle notes remind the wild nature where goats live, while we can feel the dirty, beastly, aggressive side of the animal through animal notes such as costas, oud, and a leather aroma. See, I do know what I'm talking about sometimes. Um, Emma says, I have to think of the goat that ate my father's beard when he was taking a nap one summer. My brother and I laughing our heads off. Yeah, they do eat anything, don't they? Um, that's a worldly goat, says Meta. Absolutely. God, it's... It's strange. It's strange. And the other notes that they list are violet leaf, osmanthus, goat's milk, as a note. Well, hey. Truffle, clove, cumin, cedarwood, patchouli moss, fur, oud, costas, and leather. I mean, I would imagine it's probably a very, very good synthetic oud. I would imagine. Could be wrong. Um, how bizarre. It kind of keeps veering between funky, lactonic, sweet socks that should have been changed a couple of days ago, clean, green. Really interesting and really, really kind of mossy, mouldy, damp. I'd like to try these. Sound original, says Rachel. Far more original than I thought they would be. Far more original than I thought they would be. In fact, you know, when I'm kind of, it's been quite a journey actually, sort of going from wolf to goat. Um, it, it, it's like wolf actually is a pretty basic woody, spicy scent. Okay, so let's have a re-smell. Let's go back to wolf. 
yeah, a wolf now just seems like a really pleasant, very accessible, spicy, woody, cardamom, divana scent. Bear was, which one was bear? Okay, bear was also a, a little bit more familiar. I mean, sort of larger, gruffer, more brown, furrier, but a bit more familiar. Um, deer was the second one I tried, wasn't it? Okay, has, has the deer lost its way a little bit? I mean, on the strength of this blotter at the moment, bearing in mind I've just been smelling the goat, the deer has maybe become a little bit thin, but still interesting. Oh, then we had the weasant. Now, what was the, the, we, the weasant was all the grass and everything, wasn't it? Yeah, and something, okay, now that black currant, that slightly urinous black currenty thing is coming through quite, an almost rhubarby. Oh, that really reminds me of something else. It is like, it is like if Geranium Pour Monsieur was the Dr. Jekyll, this is the Mr. Hyde version of, of you know, Geranium Pour Monsieur. Are they all very clearly distinct, says Herb? So far they are, so far they are, I think. Um, and the boar, the boar is, strange as well. These are, that's why it always pays to keep an open mind. And some times you sound like someone behaving inappropriately at a petting zoo. Why? What is it? <laughs> um, and finally, the goat again. The goat, I'm going to have to wear the goat. It's too, it's too strange, too, too unusual. But you know what? They're all kind of strange and weird and interesting without being horrifically loud. And that's a kind of feat in itself, because they're not, at least on the blotter at the moment, they are not um, supremely loud. So what's that, um, what's that brand that got a lot of attention a few years ago? Was it, was it, was it Slumber House, where they made these thick, resinous unguents, you know, really, really, really dense oozing concoctions that also were quite loud? It, it's, it's interesting that they have decided to turn the, the volume control down just uh, a little bit. Fascinating. Gen genuinely fascinating. Uh, Gavin says, yes, slumber house. I thought these would smell like those. No, no, no. They, 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 there, is, there is a kind of interesting restraint to them, um, which is why I think at least a couple will need to have a proper skin wearing. Um, okay. Well, who knew that this video was going to go quite down this route? Thank you very much for watching. If you are watching live, like I said, come back in a few minutes where we're going to be doing a very, very special acquisition, one of my vintage acquisitions. Two beautiful bottles, actually, two variations of the same perfume. Um, I, I cannot wait to share it with you. But see you in a few minutes. Take care now. Bye.